reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us join together in praying our St. Jude Novena prayer, found on page 13 of your books. St. Jude, glorious Apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus. The name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly and that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When talking to parents, especially parents of teenagers, what's one of their number one concerns that they always have? Their kids' friends. Right? Their kids' friends. Because they know that a good friend can help their kid go towards great things, right? And even holy things. They also know that a bad friend can help lead that kid down the way to perdition. Now, we've been talking a lot about friendship, and I'm going to be speaking about that the rest of this week, and about how that's a cure to the plague of loneliness that we have uh, in our world today. And today I want to talk about the need for Catholic and Christian friends. We hear in our gospel today that uh, the, the man who decides to build barns and store up for himself earthly treasure rather than heavenly treasure. And I think there's a little sort of test for us there. Do my friends help me to store up heavenly treasure or merely earthly treasure? So before we ask that question, though, we've got to ask the question, what is a friend? What is a friend? And being a good Dominican, when I did this, I decided to go back to my philosophical training. Don't worry, this is not real hard. You can, this, is, this is very easy to understand. It comes from Aristotle. Don't let that name scare you, though. Aristotle speaks of three different kinds of friendship. The first is something called the friendship of utility. I'm friends with somebody because they have something that I want, and I have something that they want, so we become buddies. This would be like your friendship with your barista, right? He or she knows how you like your coffee in the morning. And you come and you make sure that you patronize that same shop every day. They fix your coffee the right way. They might even know your name. You make sure that the business is there every day. You refer other people even to that barista. And, of course, what happens? You're, quote, unquote, friends. 
the friendship is not real deep, right? It's just based on the fact that there's a mutual exchange of goods and that you need each other for that kind of exchange of goods. So even though we might use the word friend, it's not a very deep friendship. The second kind of friendship that Aristotle speaks about is something called the friendship of utility. Uh, Sorry, the, the second kind is the friendship of pleasure. This is a more deep friendship. It's often based on when you have something in common. So a friendship where you have something in common. For instance, many of you know that I'm really good friends with Father Michael Hurley, our pastor here. What's something that we like and we have in common? The Warriors, right? Rough date last night, yes, right? Losing by two. We're both, we both like the Warriors, and so there's a certain aspect of our friendship where we like to watch Warriors games. And if you've ever watched a Warriors game with Father Michael, you get a constant commentary of all the history of the Warriors, right? So, however, my friendship with Father Michael runs much deeper than that. But if that were it, we'd say, okay, we have a common interest, right? People can have a common interest about these sort of things. They can have a common interest in things like sports. They can have a common interest in things like uh, athletics or uh, hiking or food or even beer. However, there's only a certain depth that can go, right? Because once you stop talking about those things, what else do you have in common? That's what you look for in that kind of a friendship of pleasure. So friendship of utility, where we have mutual exchange of goods. Friendship of pleasure where we have to have things in common. But then there's the third and higher form of friendship. Friendship of the good, as Aristotle says. This is when we like each other just for the sake of liking each other. We may not have a lot even in common. We might, in fact, be very, very different. As a good example of this, I always use one of my best friends, Father Anselm. Many of you know him very well. He and I are very, very different people. We certainly like some of the same things. We both like music. We both like uh, beauty. We both like truth. But we're extremely different. Nonetheless, we love each other for who we are and try to have that kind of exchange just because we love each other. This is the kind of friendship that spouses ought to have too. A friendship that even if you don't have a ton in common with your spouse, it doesn't matter because you love them and you'd be willing to give up your life for them. And we should love God in this manner as well. Not loving God because he can give us something, as in a friendship of utility. Not loving God because we have something in common with God, because, of course, that's ridiculous, right? You can't have something that close in common with God, although we do. He became a man like us. However, loving God simply because we love him. And when we have a bunch of buddies who love God in this way, in a certain sense, kind of having a common Friendship with God, but also with each other. True friendships with God and each other, that is a true Christian friend. So that is a friend of the good, that is a friend that faces each other just because we love each other, who is also a friend of God. These are the kind of friends that upbuild us in the faith. These are the kind of friends that drag us along and help us to become better Catholics. Now, sometimes we deal with some of our best friends who may not share our faith, our love of God. We might have a true friendship of the good with them, but we don't face God together. Sometimes this is even true of spouses, right? You love your spouse very much. He loves you. But there's often not that facing of God together. That's when things can get very, very tricky, right? Because your number one job in marriage is to help your spouse get to heaven. So one of the best things I often recommend for this is praying for the grace of the Holy Spirit. Pray especially for the gift of wisdom. How can I help my friend become a better Catholic? How can I help my spouse become a better Catholic? How can I help my spouse even become a Christian or even believe in God? Pray all the time to the Holy Spirit's gift of wisdom. Sometimes we also have to pray for somebody else who can help evangelize. I know with my baby brother, who I'm true friends with, it took Jehovah's Witnesses and one of our other priests, Father Jerome Cudden, to help bring him back to the faith. He and I are good friends, yet I needed help. We're not the ones that always have to do the bringing back, but we're the ones who have to be there to support. Brothers and sisters, are my friends helping me become saints? Just to conclude... 
St. John Paul II, whom we celebrate today, used as his primary evangelization tool the notion of friendship in Christ. He sought to support and to accompany people, especially those who were young. And groups of young people he would often accompany, going on hikes with them, just being their friend, but a big brother or a fatherly friend. He sought to not only love them for their own sake, but also to help turn them towards God, to be their true friend of the good, but also to help them become friends of God. Brothers and sisters, how many good Catholic friends do we have? And are we helping them become saints as well? Because remember, it's not just them helping us, but us helping them because we love them and want them to get to heaven. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.